Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 29 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn Fusion 360 or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice. No sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you pour your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you in Fusion 360 is how to use the spline tool. <clears throat> now, I will be honest with you. I really hate the spline tool. The spline tool is more of an artistic type tool. And I'm more of an engineering type guy. I'm more of a dimension and position type guy, like put it 30 millimeters over, 20 millimeters up. I'm not one to kind of eyeball and tweak things in, but that is what the spline tool is. It's to create complex shapes and contours that you can't create just using equations and math and numbers and things like that. Does that make sense? <clears throat> I hope it does. And this is going to kind of be also giving us the chance to practice our skills with the Revolve tool, which we've learned in the last few uh, in the last few lessons. But we'll be using the Revolve tool with profiles that we create using the spline tool. And so enough of this talk. Let's jump in and get busy with some designing. I will start by getting out of your way. And after getting out of your way, I will switch over to the Fusion 360 view. So I will need you to fire up your Fusion 360. And then we're going to start by creating a sketch. <clears throat> so I'm going to create a sketch. Since I'm using the Revolve tool, I'm creating a profile. So I want to design in the XZ plane, which is the red blue plane. So I'm very deliberate to select this plane that is along the red X and blue Z axis. So click that. Here we are. And I'm going to demonstrate this spline tool. This is the spline tool up here. To use it, we have to start with create. We want to create a new sketch. Where is that? Create. Ah, I've already, yeah, I'm already in here in create sketch. Maybe I am going insane, but I'm already here ready to create a sketch. Yeah, I already did that. Sorry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate the spline tool by designing a simple bowl, like a little bowl that might sit on your desk, like a little coin bowl or a little bowl for paper clips. And so in order to do that, I am going to start with a, I'm going to start with a line and I want the bottom to be about a hundred millimeters. Like I'm just sitting here. I kind of like to look at a ruler and I think a hundred millimeters would be pretty good. hundred millimeter diameter would be what radius? It would be 50. So I'm going to come out here with the line 50 millimeters like that. And now <clears throat> I want to create a profile of a bowl. I sort of want a bowl that looks like this. I also have to think about how high I would want it. I think I want it about, oh, maybe about 60 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and create a construction line and I am going to make it a construction line. I'm going to start here. And what did we say about 60 millimeters? So we'll make that 60 like that. That just gives me something to look at. And then also I think I want it to be about 50 millimeters or a hundred millimeter diameter on the top. So I will make myself another construction line that is about 55 millimeters. Okay. Or about 50 millimeters. So I'll come out here, make that 50 millimeters, enter, enter. Okay. So that just gives me something to kind of draw to. <clears throat> now 
the spline tool allows you to draw curves. So you see if I just start going like this, I can get all types of crazy curves. And the question is it does so many different things. You see now I can move the points around. I can move the points around and they're kind of just doing crazy like stuff. Or if I click on the point, I can then affect the slope. This is kind of like the slope of the tangent line. And then I can just do all this crazy stuff. And if you play around with this, it just gets so confusing. You don't have any way of actually making it do what you would want it to do because you've got the you've got how many of these click points do you do? And then what do you set the slope to? What is the position of the point? What is the slope of the tangent? And then how close do you bring in or bring out these two things? And so it can become maddening to try to do something with the spline tool. This is what I have found. The way I use the spline tool is I put a dot, I put a click everywhere my profile changes direction. Uh, mathematically, I put a click point everywhere that the tangent line on what I'm trying to create is vertical. Everywhere that the tangent is vertical on what I'm trying to create, that is where I put the click point. Or you could think of it as everywhere I change direction, like I'm getting wider, 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 and now I start getting narrower, narrow, narrower. Or where, when I go from being wider to getting narrower, that is the place that you have a vertical tangent line, and that is where you want to put a click, anywhere that you're changing direction. So let's look at the simplest bowl that I could create. I am going to come in. I'm going to get the spline tool. I'm going to start here. Okay, I'm going to start here. And then let's say that we come halfway up and I'm going to kind of come out about this far. And don't worry, what we're doing is just where I want the direction to change is where I'll click and then we can adjust things later. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click. And now don't click escape like you do with the line tool. You need to come down and you need to click on that check mark. Okay, look at that. Now I did make it a construction line, which I didn't want to. So let me come up here and say select and then turn off the construction line and look at that. Okay, that's sort of bowl shaped. And do you see here we're getting wider, 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 wider. And then where I put that point is where we're getting narrower, narrow, narrow, narrow. Now that's kind of coming out far so I can click on that point that click point and I can kind of bring it in like that. Or I could sort of bring it up. Okay. You see, I can move it around. That's why you don't have to worry so much about where you put it to begin with because you can move it around. Now that to me looks pretty good to make a little change bowl. Now what I typically don't do is I don't fool with these things because these things start making it go really wonky. Okay, these things start making it go really wonky. So I usually just leave those where they are and I just move this uh, point around. Okay, now if I wanna create the bowl, what do I do? I think the easiest way would be to come in and do modify and now I'm gonna create an offset I want to create an offset of this entire thing. I want to create the offset to be, oh, let's say five millimeters. Oh, way too much. Let's make it two millimeters. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to click OK. And once again, I got a construction. And so let's see if I can turn that off. OK. Turn that off from being a construction. Do you guys find that like as annoying as I do. I don't know what it is. I don't understand, but it's always not what I want it to be. And I guess I should be deliberate and set it before I draw it over here. Okay, now let's close that face. So I'm going to go from here to here to close that. And it wasn't a construction line that time. That's good. <clears throat> now I've got to do something up here at the top. And so what I think I'm going to do at the top is I'm going to draw this time. I want a construction line because I just want something to draw off of there. 
like that. And now I'm going to curve that by making a circle that is not construction. And I want to go from the middle and then I want to go out to the edge. That's all good. Now I'm going to trim this up a little bit. I'm going to trim it up a little bit. And now I think that I should have a face there that I could revolve. All right, so now let's come in. <clears throat> what do I want to do? I want to finish sketch. And now I am going to create, I am going to create a, or I'm going to modify by doing a, uh, it's under create, I was right the first time, a revolve. And now I'm going to select this. This is what I want. And now what axis? I want this Z axis, which is blue. Okay. And now I want a new body. It doesn't like that. What does it not like? Okay, let's come back over here and let's say I want to select that face. All right, there it is. Now I'm just going to do 90 degrees because I want to kind of look at it before I actually uh, uh, look at the whole thing. I want to kind of look at what it looks like. Okay, that looks pretty darn good for making a bowl. So let's come in and we're going to edit it to make it go all the way around now. And I realize that you can't see that. So I need to turn this off. So I'm going to come down to my timeline in this revolve icon, which is in my timeline. I'm going to right mouse click. I'm going to say edit and yeah, I messed up. I'm going to come in and I am going to say edit the feature. And this time I'm going to go 360. Okay. All the way around. I'm going to say, okay. And now look at this. Wow. What is that like five minutes? And we made a nice little coin bowl a coin bowl. Now you could come in and let's see if we could come in and like edit the sketch and we might do something like instead of this being 50, what if we wanted it to open up a little bit at the top and made it 65 like that. Okay. And now finish sketch. And now what you see is our bowl has adapted itself to the new dimensions. Our bowl has adapted itself to the new dimensions. What I could come in on the sketch and I could say, edit sketch. And what if we wanted it really not quite that tall? You see, that's a little bit tall to be reaching down into. So what if we made that 35? Now I'm curious whether it's going to break this point here by bringing that down. But if it does, then we'll just pull that point down as well. Yeah, you see, this point is at a fixed position and that sort of messed it up. And so we need to bring this down. Okay. And I need to do this one. And when I do this outside one, the inside one will follow. The inside one will follow because uh, the inside one is just an offset of the outside one. So now let's finish sketch and look at that. You see, what do we have? We have a very flat, a relatively flat and a very relatively wide bowl, which would be very easy for us to keep our change or paper clips or other things in on the top of our uh, on the top of our desk. Maybe something to throw our keys in or something like that. And then let's look at that rim there and see what the rim looks like. Yeah, you see that rim is just a nice uh, uh, circular edge that we put on it. So that really looks very, very good. OK, so what is it about this bowl that you notice? <clears throat> I had a start point. I have one point where I changed direction and then I had the end point. And so what if we wanted to, what if we wanted to have something more complicated like a vase that starts here, it comes out and then it goes in and then it comes out. That changes direction how many times? Two times. So let's see if we can do that. So I think the best thing to do would be to just start over. So I'm going to kill this, don't save. And now, I'll come up here and I will create a sketch. Again, I want the red blue plane. So I'm very deliberate there. And then this time, I think for a vase, maybe I would want it like mm, 60 millimeters in diameter, 30 millimeters in radius. So I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to create a line. I'm going to click over the origin. I'm going to come out 
30 millimeters for the base and radius, which will be 60 in diameter. And I'm going to click like that. Okay, now uh, what do I want the top? Let's make the top 30 as well. And let's go up, let's go up 150. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead. You see me, I'm glancing down at my ruler, seeing what I think would, uh, what I think would look good. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a construction line. Come over here, line type construction. I'm going to click here and I'm going to come up. I think 150 would be good. So we're going to make that construction line 150. Okay. And then I think also the opening, the opening of about 60 would be good too. So a diameter of 60 would be a radius of 30. So I'm just going to make myself a construction line here just so that I have something that I can draw to. So that will be 30. All right. And that looks pretty good. What I like to do is I like to move these dimensions way out of the way so I don't confuse a line from a construction line from one of these that's just sort of indicating dimension. <clears throat> So let's see if we can do a vase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the spline tool. And what I want is I want to come up and out to, let's say, right here. OK, and then I want to come in to right here and then I want to go like that. And now remember, you've got to find that check mark. Where is my check mark? There it is. OK. And I did not, I made it a construction line, which I didn't want to. So I will go to select, I will select it and I will make it not a construction line. All right. So that certainly looks kind of interesting. I would say this next down kind of too far. So I'm going to bring this out a little bit. And then this, I think is goes out too far. And so I, and I'm going to kind of get it about like that. Notice that I'm just clicking on those main points. I'm not messing with the things that define the, uh, the tangent line. I'm just doing the center point, the main point. I think that looks pretty good. Now what I will do is I will select that and I'm going to do a modify and I am going to make an offset and darn it. That thing is, uh, that offset is, uh, a constructions type as well. So let me turn that off. I told you it always does not what I want it to. So now I am going to come over. I'm going to modify. I'm going to do my offset. What do I want to do the offset from? I want to do the offset from this one. And let's say three millimeters. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to say, okay. All right. Now I've just got to finish this up where it wants a closed face to revolve. And so I need to come in here. I am not on construction. That's good. I hover over that. I come down. I hover over that. That looks good. OK, and then I'm going to come over here up at the top. <clears throat> and this time I do want a construction line because really I want it rounded. I'm just putting the construction line so I can get the center point off of it. And so now I'm going to get a circle, turn off construction line, hover until I get that little triangle showing that I have snapped to the middle. I'll come out and then snap to the edge. <clears throat> now I want to trim that up a little bit. So I'll get the scissors and I'm going to trim that off and I'm going to trim that off. And now I have kind of a nice, a nice vase profile. Okay. I think that is pretty good. So I will finish the sketch. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a revolve. What do I want to revolve? I want to revolve that. What do I want to revolve around the Z axis? And that gave me 90 degrees so I can kind of look at it. That looks pretty good. Let's go on 360 degrees now. All right, guys, that is that's like five minutes and we can make a beautiful, beautiful vase. Now, what's the one thing I don't like very much about this? I don't like how sharp that bottom edge is. So let's see if we can go in and adjust that bottom edge. So I'm going to turn the sketch on. I'm going to right mouse click and edit the sketch. And then this thing wants to give it to me upside down. So I'm going to go back to the front view. So I'm looking at it, how I drew it. And I'm going to see, can we fill it something when it's a curve coming into a line? So I'm going to say fill it. 
and let's see can we fill it this to this yes we can and then it looks like it automatically filleted the one above it and so that's good so let's say finish sketch and now i think that is just an absolutely lovely an absolutely lovely vase now what you can do is you can come in and you can play with it now by just doing edit sketch just remember that you want to edit the outside and then the inside one is an offset it should follow and so you see I could like take this and I could bring it up and then I could bring this one you know different ways I can create different like this almost looks like one of those little carafes more okay let's see how that looks okay yeah you see that's like something you would put a beverage in and then pour for someone let's play around with it a little more edit is this making sense that if you just think about initially when you're drawing putting the points where you want to change direction it seems to work and you say well you're not changing direction here yeah but I messed with it okay You see, there's just all types of different things you could do. You see, there's just all types of different things you could do. But the way you initially do it is when your profile changes direction, that's where you put the point. And don't worry that much about it. Just get the profile in there and then go in and tweak it to look how like you would like it to look <clears throat> let's see if we can get something a little bit more Voss like I just like kind of playing with it that looks pretty good oh yeah that's a that's a uniquely shaped vase there it's neck down a little bit too much there I think so we'll come back in and let's see if we can bring it up bring this in okay I really like that that is a nice looking that is a very nice looking vase okay guys man we are really building we are really building up those old fusion 360 design skills but don't fear I am giving you a homework assignment so that you can play around with the spline tool and you can kind of get good at it because as you're playing with this you'll find that you'll kind of have unexpected results and you'll have to learn that you kind of have to get a knack for dealing the spline tool so i want to give you something that is a little bit maybe a little bit of a challenge to model and what i want you to model is i want you to model my coffee cup and when you look at it you're going to initially say oh that's easy enough that is you know you could you're probably thinking you could almost do that just with the uh, with the loft feature but I want you to see that there is something kind of unique about this glass okay I want you to see that I want you to see that this folds in on itself this is not thick glass on the bottom that the glass is very very thin the glass comes up and then the glass folds over and then it scoops down and comes back up and so that clear spot that you see there that's not glass that is air okay and so the way this thing works is the glass is very thin it comes up and then it goes over and then it comes back down and then between here and here is air so you see this is insulated and that's what makes it such a nice cup and so let's say it's three millimeters the glass all the way around is three millimeters but let's see if you guys can figure out how to model this thing I hope you guys I haven't been reminding you the last few lessons but I hope that you are making videos of your homework solutions and posting them on YouTube 
YouTube. I really love how we're starting to get sort of a sense of community and you guys are looking at each other's designs and you're giving feedback to each other. And when you post a video and then leave a comment and then on your video in the description link back to this video and then in my, uh, you know, in, in my video, leave a comment pointing people over to your homework solution. And when you guys do that, I go and I look at every single homework solution that you guys post. And so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to use this revolve tool and this spline tool to see if we can model this most excellent coffee cup. Guys, I hope you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. <clears throat> if you enjoyed the lesson, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Also remember to subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe to the channel, make sure you ring that bell so that you'll get notifications for future videos when I release them. And also be sure to share this with your friends and family because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later. Ha <laughs> ha.